Hello everyone, my name is Victor Mateke and today I will show you my compiler that I've been working on. This compiler is for a language, uh, well, mostly for a language by Jonathan Blow, if you've heard of it. Um, you can actually watch a YouTube playlist about it here, Programming Language for Games. Um, and this guy has been developing this language for over 10 years now, as you can see, um, and he's using it for his own stuff but it's still proprietary. So I've decided that I actually want to do a compiler for a low budget version of it, um, which implements uh, some features, but far from all of them. Um, obviously the compiler is much sim simpler, um, but you know, uh, it was a very interesting problem to work on it. And I've learned quite a lot about it um, on how to compile or how to design compilers and how to work on complex problems and so on. And uh, so I wanted to just give a rough overview of um, the state of it or actually go into two features that I've implemented recently that are very interesting. Um, the compiler is, or, you know, has all the, the features that you would expect from a compiler. So um, you have structs, procedures, whatever. You have two backends, you have the x64 backend, which outputs machine code directly. Um, and you can obviously debug that machine code that works as well. Um, but you also have a C backend, uh, which, you know, output C code, which then com gets compiled using a C compiler um, that can do optimization passes. Uh, that code is a lot harder to debug though. Um, but you know, you've, you've got all the basic features that you would expect. And then the, the two features that I want to show today. Uh, the compiler is written in C++ from scratch. I don't use LLVM. Um, I don't use any libraries at all. I don't think apart from like uh, one for calculating the checksum of a file. Um, and obviously a C compiler, <laughs> if you want to count that. Uh, but apart from that, it's it's from scratch. It's about 30,000 lines of code and like, um, I think 40, 40,000, around 40,000 lines of code if you count empty lines and, and comments. Um, and I've been working on this for about two years now, or two and a half years, I believe. Um, so yeah, let's let's jump right into it. So the first feature that I want to show is this integrated build system. Um, so if you are familiar with the language uh, by Jonathan Blow, you already know what this is, but I've implemented it recently in my version. Um, basically, you have these run expressions, uh, which can run arbitrary code at compile time. Right, so this means this procedure here gets run at compile time. Um, and this can be used for arbitrary purposes. So you could also say if I have like a main here, um, you can also say return hashtag run a factorial. And this will compute a factorial of five given, you know, I have to write this factorial, but that's pre pretty basic. So that's been a language for a while, but recently I've also implemented that you can uh, have interaction with the compiler which means, okay, so we run this compile and back Minecraft um, at compile time. And what will this do? It will create a uh, workspace options. A workspace is just a name for program basically. And then you set different workspace options and then you create and compile the workspace. And so this will actually compile a completely different program by running this, this file here. And then we can set a message callback, which is this thing right here, and we get compiler messages. And these compiler messages are information about the workspace that we are compiling. In this case, the workspace Minecraft. And so in this case, we can see all, all the type information that we get, all the, the types, all the data types in the Minecraft workspace will actually be reported to us and we can print them out here. And this is exactly what we do. So if I say Prometheus is my name for the, for the language, um, because you know, it's obviously not, not the actual language by Jonathan Blow. So I had to come up with a name for it. Um, so if I invoke this here and say, okay, let's compile this test file, then we get a lot of output here. And these are all the different types in the Minecraft workspace, um, it printed out. So these are all struct and enum types. I've left out all the other types like array type, slice type, string type, obviously you get all these as well, but they're not interesting. But you can see, okay, so here's raw input. This is a Windows header, right? It has two members. Um, what else we have? We have free type stuff here for text rendering, like all these different things. Um, 
like we have the key code enum, right, which has all these different values here and so on. And so pr we print all these out and then we completed the Minecraft workspace. Um, now this took a lot of time because we're printing uh, a lot of stuff, obviously. Like if I, I can also just disable this callback and we see in this case, it's a bit quicker. The compiler is still not as fast as, as I would like it to be, but you know, I'm working on it. Um, but yeah, we can now also just give options. So one option would be, hey, after we compile this thing, let's just immediately run it. This is very interesting for testing. We can do we compile here, and then we are actually running this thing, Minecraft, which is Minecraft, you know, obviously a very base bare bone uh, clone of the, the game, but you know, it was interesting to, to work on this. This is completely written in this language, right? But I can also just look at these options here. So these are the workspace options. You know, we can set a name, we can set different output paths, we can specify source files, linker options. Um, we can also say, oh, I want to use the C backend, for example. Uh, then we can see actually here, right? Uh, so we output a C file and then this gets compiled, which takes a lot longer um, because the C compiler, we have to output all the C code and then the C compiler has to run on it. Um, it's hard to see now, but this is running from the C backend, right? So it would be a bit faster. I don't have frame time information here, but trust me. Uh, we can also, you know, enable the certain runtime features, um, which are implemented in the language. So these can be listed here. We have bounce checking, cast checking, overflow checking. Um, so all of these are enabled by default, but you, you know, you can also say, oh, I don't want none of them because they obviously do have a runtime overhead. Um, and yeah, that, that just works. So what you can do is you basically have this build system inside the, the, uh, inside the language. So you don't need CMake, you don't need Ninja, you don't need any of that. Um, you just have a build file, right? This, this build script, but it's the same language as anything else. And you just get this introspection of the workspace for free. You don't need anything. You don't need like a separate parser for it or anything. And this can be used, I mean, right now we're just bringing it to the console, which is obviously pretty stupid, but you, but you can use this to, to generate more code and include that code in the, in the compilation process. For example, for serialization or just inspection of like what data types you have, maybe you want to do some, um, you know, some checks on, oh, I don't want to store raw pointers in certain structs or whatever. You can just do anything. Um, and that's a pretty, pretty cool feature which obviously, you know, exists in, in the original language. I just want to make that clear. It's, it's nothing new, but I was pretty happy when that actually worked in my, my version of the compiler. And so something or somewhat related to, to, to this thing right here is we also have just runtime type information. Um, so I wanted to show that uh, in this print uh, file here. So this is just printing stuff out to the console. Um, but yeah, so we can actually, let me just demonstrate that here. So, excuse me, uh, in this case here, we are printing this stuff manually, uh, right? We're formatting it, but I can also just say, oh, print this struct, uh, type. And then I just say a percent for something formatted. And then I just give the value. And so I haven't actually tested, I should have tested that before. Um, but, oh, I forgot to set the callback. Um, okay, this is a pointer. Yes, that's why I should have tested it. But uh, basically we, we get a lot of output now. Uh, what just happened? So basically I'm saying, oh, do you reference the struct because this is a pointer, um, but then print that value here. And so what we can see is there's a lot of stuff printed, um, but basically the, it's a struct and we just print out all the members. Um, and so we can see, oh, the type info that's inheritance, basically, uh, this is the base. It's a, is it struct? Uh, source info is this file, line 202. The display name of the struct is this, size and bytes and so on. And then we have the members, which is the slice, um, previous, and so on. And this is actually, um, that's actually bug, I, I believe, because that should be false. Um, but yeah, so what is happening here? I know this output is very much uh, 
not ideal. Um, but what, what is happening here is actually in, when we're printing stuff, we actually look at the type info of the pass argument um, and say, okay, give me the type info of that. And then depending on the type info, print out some special formatting. So if it's an integer, okay, we just want to print an integer that's handled elsewhere. If it's a Boolean, say, oh, is it true or is it false? This is a problem here, actually. <laughs> Let me just fix that. Um, you know, if it's an array, then just print out all the members separated by commas. And if it's a struct, look at all the, the members, print out these members um, and the value that is, you know, at that position and so on. Um, and so this this just works as well. This works at runtime uh, because you know the executable file gets a type table integrated, which is pretty large. Um, but you can just look at the type info of any type there, and get the information about all the members, all the values, um, whatever. And so that's how we how we do this printing. And this also came online recently, um, so I'm also very proud of that because this is. Again, very interesting for, you know, this print, obviously, because, you know, you can just print out arbitrary stuff. You don't have to do this dumb or very error prone, let's say, um, oh, I want to print a string and then I want to print an integer and then I want to print a character like you have to do in C. You just do this and then the, the compiler will, or the, the print module actually will take care of printing it nicely. Um, but again, you know, you can also do use this for serialization purposes, for analysis, whatever. Um, so yeah, those are two features that I found very interesting to, to work on, to implement, and then actually obviously to use as well. Um, again, this compiler just, I can show you just, we, we've seen the Minecraft example, but there's also another example that I wrote this invaders program, which is just a very, very simple shooter, obviously. Um, but you know, this just to show that this is actually, a, you know, you can do stuff with this. It's not just some, some toy, you can actually use it to program um, arbitrary stuff. This terminal has, has actually also been written in this language. Um, and so, yeah, that was my demo on, on my compiler for this language. And I hope you enjoyed.